So I am fascinated by Eloise as a character because I think it's very interesting that her influences come from her grandmother's music. Because I think we all kind of have that embedded in us. Like I'm looking at a Bob Dylan poster because of my dad. And so I wanted to know what specifically about Eloise and that dynamic between uh, the history she learned from her grandmother and her journey into fashion school uh, drew you to telling this story from her perspective. I think for my part, it was uh, like Rita Tushing plays Peggy's, um, plays like Thomason's grandmother is the same age as my mum. So exactly the same age, they're both like 77. And, uh, and so I, there was an element where I, I thought that like if Thomasin was grown up with her grandmother um, or Eloise had grown up with her grandmother, that she would be into kind of like her, her grandmother's taste in music or would listen to those records. I, was always, I mean, I was always like that growing up because my parents had a, a very small record collection. It was just one box and it was all 60s albums. And they seemed to stop buying albums when me and my brother were born. So there were like no 70s albums. So I was like, you know, cause my parents used to sort of work a lot and work two jobs and, you know, so I just remember being left alone with the record player and the sixties records and just playing them over and over and over again. So then it, that's, that's where it starts, like maybe what might be a strange obsession with a decade that you never lived in. Like, and, and that would be something that I would love sort of disappearing back into that time through the music or through the films or through the art. But then the longer that goes on, you start to question why you're doing that and then start to worry that is nostalgia a, a retreat? Are you, is it a failure to deal with modern life? I mean, yeah, for me, I mean, my, my mom was born in 1961, so she was obsessed with the 60s because she never really got to experience them apart as a, like, you know, a very young child. And I, I always, you know, was very close with my, my grandma and my grandfather. I remember looking at pictures of them and trying to work out like who were they what kind of people were they in the 60s and I, I sometimes think like that nostalgia to be somewhere you're not is also to know the people that you came from uh, and to learn about them and I suppose some of that's tied up in, in like Ellie's closeness with her with her grandmother um and yeah like with fashion I mean Edgar's mom worked in fashion my mom and my grand like my grand was a seamstress she used to put newspaper dresses on my mom and we've got pictures of that and so you're always kind of like just just pulling these like interesting like facets and the things that like catch your eye and then you know presenting them and, and filtering them through character uh, yeah so I made this joke on Twitter but I stand by it that uh, I think you guys got my dream journal from college to give me evil 60s era Matt Smith um because that was everything I've wanted for a really long time for him and it's very interesting because he is such a like morally black character in contrast to the innocence of Ellie. Uh, and so I want to know, was that something you aimed for while creating Jack as a character or did it just kind of turn out that way within the story that he was just, we knew straight out the gate, this was not someone like we should be trusting. No, I mean, it was always designed that that's where his character was going. That wasn't something that kind of like just sort of, um, but I'd say this about Matt, the reason that it works, and I think it's also kind of key to the character, is like Matt is incredibly charming in that part, in the sense that like you have to be seduced by that character in the same way that those kind of people, you know, those operators like that would be able to kind of like first kind of like charm somebody and then kind of start to sort of coerce and gaslight them. It's always from kind of just, a, a, you know, like an extreme, I just confidence in what he's doing. I mean, the thing I sort of talked to Matt about, which I think sort of is that, cause the character doesn't really, you know, kind of deserve any sympathy, but I, I did say to for him to play it like he, he thought he was doing the right thing or rather, and this is where it's more disturbing in terms of like how showbiz worked back then. Like, like it doesn't, I mean, I say that back then as if it's not hap still happening now, but is the way that people, that terrible phrase, this is how it works. And like, so I think Matt has a line in the movie that's very similar to that, that I think is one of the most disturbing things where it's not really clear whether he's being malicious or whether he thinks this is the only way to kind of like sort of continue in this business. And the fact that that's ambiguous, it to me is very disturbing. 